I think got about 35% are English. And uh, if you compare us to, you know, successful international countries like Spain and uh, yeah, probably France, uh, Portugal, um, they get 70 odd percent uh, a home grown player. So if if we can increase our 35 percent to something like 70 odd percent, then naturally at the depth of our uh, international talent is much better playing regular first team football. So we were introducing quite a few things after the review that we we completed sort of at the end of last year, and and that document now has got about 25 recommendations. So we're, we're starting to introduce that and try and encompass that into our younger international development teams like under 16, 17, 19, 21. So that we try and have a long term plan to to improve you know our senior team results in the years ahead. Is it a concern, Trevor, when you look at English football, the likes of Manchester United, you know, the large clubs, Arsenal as well, have a number of young foreign players in their academy? I know the percentage is still high of English players and the ratio per academy, but is there a concern at how they look abroad to bring in young players? Yeah, I think we're a little bit unique in that, that our bigger clubs tend uh, you know, to bring in more in, in those younger age groups. I mean, when we first set up the academies, as as you say, uh, you know, they they look after young players' development between nine and sort of almost up to eighteen, when you know they they, they get signed on, uh, well, sixteen really from school. And um, you know, during that development time, we all envisage that you know they'll be all English or British youngsters uh, over a period of time. Certainly, some of the bigger clubs have talent ID different parts of the world and so they do bring them in at that 16, 17, 18 age group. Um, none of the other European countries do that probably and so um, you know that is a concern. All I, all I try to get and I, I think we try to you know, the English FA in the last two or three years we've, we've introduced a lot more age appropriate courses. You know we think they need to be specialised coaches A in the 5 to 11 when there's a lot more individual skill work and then small sided games and then when you start to progress to whether it be 9 v 9 11 v 11 a bit more understanding of how to pass out through the three thirds as we mm-hmm. call them you know out, out from the goalkeeper through through the midfield out the front and if you look at teams like you know Barcelona um, and Spain are naturally uh, two sides whether club or, or country where Spain have had a massive success and the way they keep the ball and keep possession and pass is something that we, you know, we brought out new document last year to, to try and get a more technical uh, passing style playing out from the back, which which a lot of the Premier League sides, uh, you know, certainly play that way. But um, naturally, if our international team is going to do that, we need to, as I say, up that percentage. So um, I, I, if, I think if we get more specialised uh, and, and, and introduce these uh, age-appropriate courses, what we need to get is, you know, population of getting under 60 million. We we need to have a lot more depth of talent at 16, which is when the clubs sign them on the scholarship. I think at the moment we haven't produced enough quality players at that age. So uh, then it it dilutes the need for clubs to bring in, you know, those those overseas youngsters at that younger age. At the moment, I'm I'm not a great one for quotas. Quotas being, right. you know, you must have X number of English youngsters in a squad because then sometimes you're you're you know you're you're reducing the quality because by just imposing a quota and, and if the the English youngsters are not good enough it then weakens some of the bigger clubs if they're competing in Europe and everything. I've always try to look at improving the quality of our players on merit and getting into the teams on merit rather than just imposing quotas. I mean, development players today is just not about technical ability. We saw the Rooney incident. These young boys, compared to years ago, were making millions and millions of pounds. It, the, there's also the other side of this, the celebrity factor, that a lot of these kids aren't ready for. And does that make it harder to develop a young player today, Trevor, knowing that once these boys make it, they're going to be put under a spotlight that you just can't prepare them for? Well, it's it is a big challenge. It's important for the people around them, whether you know it's family, friends. Um, sometimes it comes to the agents, doesn't it? Uh, the yeah. club, the, the clubs where they're at, the academy people. You know, there there are sort of educational uh, people there that try to um, you know develop them from a social point of view. You know, communication skills like you know, just a basic thing like being interviewed after matches and that trying to come across in the right way. Um, and then of course, you know, if they get that first team experience early and they get the big money early I mean you know that's the one of the biggest challenges you could have a 21 year old team in the dressing room who's a multi-millionaire already and uh, how do you keep them 
you know, motivated, right. at the top of their game, training, uh, you, know, the, you know, off the field I- incidents. That balance is a massive challenge um, when, when so much money has been thrown at an early age. You, you try to prepare them for it. Some deal with it well and some not so good. And uh, that is one of the, you know, the biggest challenges probably that um, managers have because, like, if you've got a 25-man squad, they're probably split into different sections, you know, for a third of them. You don't have a lot of problems with the third, a, a bit more challenging, and then the other third, you have issues, you know, a, a lot of the time. And so the, the, they're the ones uh, I think these days is, is such a much wider role as a manager. You almost think, in my generation, when I was a player, whoever was managing me just looked at at the playing side and was almost right. like a first team coach. Now I think the management role is so much wider. All the, all the media outlets you got to deal with. It's tough after a game. You just lost. Uh, might be a bad decision against you or, or a mistake. Uh, and, and you, you get interviewed, you get frustrated, you, you've got to try and deal with that. So I think the, the pressure uh, to try and you know, conduct yourself right from a manager point of view uh, is something that a player 